Okay, let me open Outliner first. Now, create disk. Increase its subdivisions up to 5. Rotate it to 90 degrees by X axis. Rename it into the Sun. Next, create a cube. Go to its settings. Set width up to 3. And height to 0.2. All other inputs are just fine as they are. Now, go into a front view. Right click on a cube. Assign new material. Lambert. Change the color to black. It will add more contrast in a the viewport. Then select the cube. Go to a mesh shelf and create mesh network. In the attribute editor go to distribute node. Change number of points to 20. Distance x 0. And distance y minus 5. It will duplicate our lines 20 times down the y axis. I will also add my mesh editor under the outliner. So I always have fast access to it. Now it is time to add some animation. But before that, change the animation frame rate from 24 to 30 fps. Go to the animation settings. Change the playback speed from play every frame to 30 fps per second, which means we'll have real time playback. Also, I'll go to the settings and check my working units. Remember that mesh networks work only with centimeters yet. Save the settings. Now I'm gonna set 0 as a starting frame. And for the last frame I use 300, which means all our animation will take 10 seconds total. Now go to the mesh editor, click plus and add transform node. By changing Y position you'll see how the lines moves up and down. It's the motion will be animating. Move the lines up a bit so they cover the top of the sun. Right click, set key. I put the bottom of the first line on the top point of the sun. Will be easier to loop the animation later. Once you change the position value, set key again. And now go to the last frame and increase the value if you want this retro lines go up or decrease if you want them falling down. Set the key for it too. Now let's play the animation to check the results. You may notice that animation now isn't uniform. It starts slow, then go faster and slow down to the end. To fix it, go to Window, Animation Editor, Graph Editor. Make sure the transfer mode is still active. Select both keyframes and make their tangents linear. Let's play again. Now the animation is linear, but a little bit too slow. Let's speed up it twice. So go to the last frame and increase the position value up to 4. Set key. Great. Now I need to make these lines become smaller as they moving up and disappear before they reach the top of the sun. But first, let's make small changes to the viewport. Right now these black lines distract from seeing the result look. I want to make it less noticeable on the viewport. Therefore, I change the color of my rectangles to a natural gray and hide a grid in the viewport. Now I can see the sun shape clearly. Return to a mesh editor and add an offset node. Change the transformation space to local. Disable rotation and assign minus 1 to a y axis of the offset scale. The lines have disappeared because they have zero size now. To control the fading, go to a fall off object tab. Right click, create. It will create an extra shape in our scene. Select the shape so we open its settings. Now, decrease inner zone to zero and scale the shape to the size of the sun. You may notice that in central point of this shape, lines disappear, while closer to the edge they become bigger. So let's put the center of this shape on the place where lines should be faded away. Make sure that the shape is big enough to cover the whole sun inside its borders. The lines now become smaller as they move up, but they appear again in the top part of the sun. To make them gone, we have to cut everything above the center point of the falloff object. To do that, go to Mesh Editor and create Visibility node. Create a falloff object for it too. 
Select the new falloff shape in the Mesh Network window or directly in the Outliner. This time change the shape to a cube and increase the inner zone up to 1. It will make a sharp borders of our falloff object. Resize the cube so it fits our sun and move it a little bit down so every line which goes outside this cube will disappear. There is one more scene we have to change here. Notice that the space between the lines becomes bigger as the lines become smaller. On the reference instead, the space between the lines is a bit more uniform from the bottom to the top. To change it, we can play with the position parameter in the offset node. Select the offset node and increase the position offset up to 0.5. Now the offset between lines is much more uniform. Mm. I'd actually like to add more lines in the sun. To do that, basically go to a distribute node and increase number of points. Here we go. Now I should fix an offset position again. But this time I'll go to a falloff mesh offset object and in its settings I'll be changing the falloff ramp curve. I want to increase the influence in the middle, so I create an extra point on the ramp, lift it up a bit and change the interpolation from the linear to spline. Also, I'll change the interpolation of the left point. The sun is almost done. But I want this animation to be a loop in 300 frames length. To make sure it is, I go back to the Mesh Transform node and change the first and the last key. I'm basically eyeballing the value of the first and the last frame to fit focusing on the position of the upper line. As our animation is done, I'm gonna hide all helpers objects to leave only the sun in the scene. So go to the show menu in the viewport and check known first, then go to the show menu again and select polygons. Now we'll be able to see only the sun geometry. The last thing we need to do is to cut the lines from the sun. First, let's clean up the outliner a little bit. Group all mesh helper objects, except the mesh repro mesh. Select the sun, then repro mesh. Go to the mesh menu, booleans, difference. And... And... Oops. Not the quite result we expected. The reason is hidden in the default settings of the boolean operation. Since the sun object is flat, we'll have to change the uh, intersection classification from edge to normal. Let me undo the boolean. Select the sun again, then repro mesh, go to the mesh menu and open its options by clicking the little box on the right. Change the intersection option to normal. Edge classification treats open meshes like closed volumes, so the boolean operation kinda extends the object instead of cutting it. Normal classification instead will cut any flat object apart. Even after this stage you still can go back to the mesh nodes and make any changes you want in the existing network. As long as you don't delete the history, animation should work just fine. The only thing left is to add some glowing material to the sun. Select the sun, right click and choose assign new material. Go to the Arnold tab and choose IE standard. Decrease the base weight to zero, same as a specular. Go to emission tab and increase its weight. Let's rename our material to IE sun mat. By properly naming your stuff, you make your scenes much easier to work with. I'll use the hyper shade window to add color to the sun. Go to the window. Rendering Editors, Hyper Shade. Hold the right button on the Sun Material and choose Graph Network. Press Tab to create a new node and type Ramp. Choose the ramp projections so you won't care about UVs. It will create a simple network with the ramp node and projection utility, which will place the ramp based on the world position of the object. Connect the projection node to the emission color. Select the ramp node, we'll be changing its color now. But first, let's see how it looks on the sun. 
simply turn on a texture mode in the viewport. Ok, I'm gonna hide the heaper sheet so you could see my viewport. And now in the attribute editor I'm gonna change the ramp. Black color I changed to the light yellow. And the white one to a purple. Or actually... I will go with a reddish one. On this stage you can make any changes you want. Play with interpolation, add more colors, you decide how the gradient may look like. Ok, that's all for this lesson. In the next part we'll take a look on how to create this low poly land with a glowing grid on it. Want to see more? Subscribe on our channel and see you in the next video.